Okay, today we're going to be talking about our solving for acceleration, time interval, final velocity, and initial velocity. Um, I told you guys on the homework that I wanted to focus on, first of all, I need this microphone. Um, on the homework, I wanted to focus on finding acceleration and time interval, and then sort of the extension section of this is the part that includes um, uh, final velocity and initial velocity. So we'll get started here. Um, solving for A. Let me get my marker out here. Solving for A given the change in velocity and time. Okay. A equals delta V divided by T. This is the same as saying A equals delta V over T. Okay. Now I want to remind you that delta V is just the change in velocity. It's the same thing as VF minus VI. So it equals VF minus VI over T. Just like I had explained yesterday, it's the same thing, same equation. All right. So the problem is a stone falls from a tower and accelerates to 30 meters per second. It takes three seconds. What was its acceleration? Again, step one to solving any of this is to find the question acceleration. So then we write our equation A equals delta B over T. And, or we could write this equation, but we know that I already gave you the answer to this part. Right? So then step two, we'll write it again A equals, well, it says it accelerates to 30 meters per second. What was its acceleration? Oh, you know what? This problem actually doesn't give you delta V. It says it falls and accelerates to 30. Actually, we do need to write VF minus VI. I need to go back. Sorry about that, guys. I was mistaken. We need VF minus VI over T because I, I didn't give you delta V like I thought I did. It was a mistake on my part. Someone's saying something in the chat. Okay. So, stone falls from a tower. If it falls from the tower, that tells us its initial velocity here. Its initial velocity is zero. A equals, so C, oh man, I'm a mess. I need to go back. Okay. A equals VF minus VI over T. Well, VF, we say it accelerates to 30 meters per second. So that's its final velocity, 30. Minus, well, if it falls from a tower, did I say I threw it down from the tower? Did it have a starting velocity? If something is just falling, at the beginning of its fall, how fast is it going? What is its velocity? Zero. So 30 minus zero. And then for T down here, it tells us three seconds. So A equals 30 minus zero over three. We go in, we go further, and we solve this. A equals, well, 30 minus zero is 30. So delta V up here is going to be 30. We divide that by 5. A equals 30 over 3, which equals 10. A equals 10. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I thought that I had set these up so that it, oh, these two questions that gave you um, delta V. But I guess in that first problem, I, I made a mistake. The second problem here, it clears out. A biker accelerates for 10 seconds. He speeds up by 40 meters per second. What was his acceleration? Again, we're going to find we're going to find the question. Acceleration. Acceleration equals the change in the velocity. In your head, you can say change in speed. It's basically the same thing. Delta v over t, the time interval, the amount of time it takes. Biker accelerates for 10 seconds, he speeds up by 40 meters per second. So 
we rewrite that equation again, A equals, and we, we need to find delta V. How much did the velocity change? How much did the velocity change? What was delta V here? It says he speeds up by 40 meters per second. That is his delta V, 40 over, well, how long did he speed up? How much time did he take to speed up? 10 seconds, 40 over 10. A equals 40 over 10. 40 over 10 is the same as 4. I guess I should have done that in the color. But that's step three. So in these first few questions, I'm giving you the value for delta V. I'm telling you that the difference between the starting speed and the final speed, I give you that. Okay. I give you that, that value. But I won't always give you that value. I need you to be able to figure it out either way. Okay. Well, this problem we are going to solve for T if I give you delta V and A. If I give you the change of velocity. In acceleration, you can find T. In other words, the time interval equals change in velocity divided by acceleration. So we took that equation and we just flip flopped uh, the A and the T traded places. This is the same equation, by the way. I know it looks weird the way it's written here, but this is the same equation you guys have already seen. This is T equals delta V over A. It's the same thing. This slash. Is the same thing as you know this bar here. It's just easier to type um, when I'm just typing it down. So, question three, we begin with the question: how long did it take? How long did it take? That tells us that we are looking for t. So we're going to use our t equation, time, time interval. The time interval of acceleration is this equation, it is delta V over A. The change in speed over the acceleration, the change in speed divided by the acceleration. Step two, we're going to write that again, except we're going to put the value in there. How much did the speed change? How much did the speed change? Well, it changed by 12. It decreased by 12. So it decreased by 12, that means it's negative 12. It slowed down by 12, negative 12. And then we said it decelerated two meters per second squared. So the acceleration down here is negative two. When we go to solve this, it's just the same as 12 over two. Time was six. It took six seconds for the truck to slow down. Yeah. Problem number four it says a rock rolls down the hill. It accelerates five meters per second squared. Its speed increased by 25 meters per second. How much time did it accelerate? We want to know how much time. How much time did it accelerate? How much time? Again, this tells us step one is T equals delta V over A. Step two, we rewrite that. We rewrite that T equals, well, what was the delta V? How much did the speed change? It says it increased its speed by 25. So 25. Okay. Divided by, well, how long did it take? To excel, or sorry, how much did it accelerate? It accelerated at a rate of five meters per second squared. Okay. Accelerate at five meters per second squared. This A here comes from the word accelerate. Okay. So then the next step is to just solve, and this is easy to solve. T equals 25 divided by five is five, five seconds. Okay, 
That, for some reason, was the hard part. That part was really confusing for people in the past because when I tell you what this subtraction problem is up top, when I give you this value, it's harder for you guys to keep in mind what we're doing rather than if I said, instead of saying it increased its speed by 25, I said it went from zero to 25. And then instead of making you subtract that, I give you that value, it confused people. So um, I just want to get that out of the way. Most of the rest of these questions, um, you'll be doing the subtraction problem. Most of the rest of the questions in the unit. On this piece of paper, it is all the rest of these questions. So um, I'm going to clear this and we're going to scroll down. Now we're going to be solving for A if we're given the F, the I, and T. And here's our equation A equals, or acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by T. Well, we've never seen this equation written this way before, but it's the same as. A equals DF minus DI over T. It's just I put these in parentheses so that we knew that we did that part first. And you know, this slash symbol is the same thing as this bar. Okay, it's the same thing. From an algebra standpoint, I wrote it correctly, but you guys have seen it this way. So this is the way you should, you know, be used to. All right, step one, figure out which equation I'm going to use. The car is going 40 on the highway for five seconds. It accelerates until it's going 50 meters per second. What is its acceleration? So what is its acceleration tells us we're going to use our A equation. A equals DF minus DI over T. This time we have to do this part right here. I'm not going to give you delta V. Right. Step two is we're going to rewrite this equation, A equals, except for now we're going to take values from the problem and we're going to plug it in uh, to the equation. So what's the final velocity? The first thing I need is this final velocity here, the final velocity. The final velocity is going to be the velocity at the end of the story, at the end of the change. So it's going 40. Five seconds, it does a thing, and then it's going 50. So the final velocity is the velocity that happens later. 50 minus the starting velocity. The velocity that happens earlier goes here. Now, it doesn't always have to be a big number minus a smaller number, because sometimes things speeds are slower at the end of a problem than they are at the beginning when things decelerate. That's not, the, that's not what's going on here. So 50 minus 40, we have to divide that by T. How much time took place? So I need to go and find T. Well, it says the acceleration took place over five seconds. So A equals 50 minus 40 over five. And then step three is to solve this. 50 minus 40 is 10 over 5. And then we rewrite A equals 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, if you didn't know. Okay? So that's how we solve that. Again, step one, we put in our correct equation. Step two, we put in the correct values in that equation and we put them in the right place. Okay. This has to be VF. This has to be VI. This has to be T. Okay. And then once we do that, we can work the problem. So that gives us this and then this. All right. Moving down here, we're going to go to question six. All right. Problem six. An apple falls from a tree, its starting speed is zero, its final speed is 18, it falls for two seconds. What is its acceleration? Again, we find the question, acceleration, so A equals DF 
minus vi over t, because that's our equation for acceleration. Again, this value here is delta v. That's what this is. Right? Vf minus vi, that's, that's your change in velocity, delta v. A equals, well, now we need to find the final velocity. What well, says the starting speed is zero, its final speed is 18. So, final velocity is going to be 18. The starting velocity, excuse me, starting velocity is going to be zero. And it tells me here it falls for two seconds. The trick, the thing we need to do, the thing we need to make sure is that this is always the final velocity. This is always the starting velocity. That's the main place where we mess up. Okay. And to know if something's the final velocity, it's the velocity that happens later in the story. Or it happens last in the story, actually. It's what final means. It's the ending velocity or the final speed, the ending speed. Velocity and speed, they can flip flop in this equation because they, they mean the same thing in these equations. They will in this physical science class anyway. <clears throat> because we're not going to do a whole lot of math with directions. We need trigonometry for that. We're not going to get into that. Actually, we're using calculus when we do that two dimensions. So, all right. Or three dimensions. So, We've got a is 18 minus 0 over 2. That's easy enough to solve. a equals 18 over 2. a equals 9. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Cool. Problem number 7, pretty straightforward. It just puts it right in order for us. If vf equals 10, vi equals 4, t equals 3, then what is a? It's saying what is a, so we're going to use our a equation. a equals vf minus vi over t. So rewrite it again. A equals, well, vf, I give you here, is 10. vi is 4. And the time is 3. 10 minus 4 over 3. A equals 6 over 3. A equals So that's how we solve to find A. That's where we begin. That's the most basic. This is where we get all of this math from. It comes from this equation here. A equals VF minus VI over T. Okay. You can find VF, VI, and T, and you can find the acceleration. There's a question in the chat. I'm going to look at it. Just a dash or something. The word of apostrophe, posted an apostrophe in the chat, draw my attention. Okay, so now we're going to move on, we're going to solve for t. Okay, and you guys have seen this equation before, but when I wrote it for you, it looked like this, t equals vf minus vi over a. This is the same equation. It's just that I put it in parentheses here so that I could write it all on one line. Okay, put these in parentheses. Instead of this bar, I use a slash. But it's, again, it's the same as the other equation. This and this are the same thing. It's saying the same thing mathematically. It's the same expression. <clears throat> so, we'll attack the problem. Apply your acceleration from 20 to 60 to the acceleration with 10. How long did it take for 10 to speed up? How long did it take? How long? This is asking us for time. So our equation is going to be t equals, so t equals equation. Okay? How long do we need time? t equals vf minus vi over n. Step two, e equals, well, what is vf? It says here he goes from 20 to 60. Which one happened later? 60. 
Which one happened earlier? 20. We divide that by A. What is our acceleration? And his acceleration was 10. 60 minus 20 over 10. We go to step three where we solve that. P equals 60 minus 20 is 40 over 10. 40 over 10 equals 4. I know because you know I have a calculator in my brain. <clears throat> so that's how we're going to solve these key equations. Okay, we're going to find this delta v here. Again, this 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 value in this written this is delta v. And sometimes we have to solve to find it. Sometimes Mr. Van Y will give us that value, and that's how we solve. Problem nine. Can rolls with the blah, 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 speeds up from blah, blah, blah. What was the time interval for it to change speed? Time interval. It's telling me that I'm going to use my T equation. So that's step one. I write my T equation. This is good credit on a test, by the way. If you can write this correct equation here, if you write this down, that shows the person grading the test that you at least know which math applies to the problem. That's step one, is knowing which math we're going to use. Step two is to put the values into that equation. I've got a typo here. This should be a little too up top. Oh, no. A can rolls with an acceleration of the law. It speeds up from 16 to 24. So P equals VF. Which one happens first, 16 or 24? 24 happens later in the story, so it gets written down first. 24 minus 16. Okay. So we're trying to figure out how much the speed changed. We're trying to find this delta V, how much the speed changed. So we need to know where it started and where it ended and subtract. So it's 24 minus 16. Okay. And we divide that by A, it gives us acceleration of 4. Now we've got it all written down. We're ready to solve. P equals, well, what's 24 minus 16? 8. Divided by the 4 for the acceleration. We rewrite that again. 8 over 4 is 2, two seconds. In the chat, I'd like you guys to stop me if I need to review any, go back and review any of that. Let me make sure everyone's clear on that before I start problem number 10. Any questions, just pop them into the chat. I want to clear those up before I do problem 10. Before we do problem. Problem 10 tells us right here out loud what is T. We're going to use our T equation. We go to step two. We're going to punch the values into the problem. T equals Vf is 110 minus Vi, which is 90, and A equals 10. One ten minus ninety is twenty. I know because I wrote the fourteen, and also one hundred ten minus ninety is twenty. We divide that by ten. Twenty over ten is the same as two. <clears throat> I would say that the hardest part of all of this, the hardest part of any of this, is figuring out which one of these is which. Which one is VF and which one is VI? And the thing to know is that the one that happens last, the speed at the end of the story, is VF. The speed that happens at the beginning of the story is VI. I should say the velocity at the end of the story, the velocity at the beginning of the story. If we can know which of those is which, we know which one goes first when we write it down, 
we will be able to get these correct, I believe. This is where people make the mistake. Okay, these are the extension activities. This is kind of the next little bit we're going to talk about. It's still part of section 4.2, but it, uh, it's a little more complicated, uh, or it seems to trip people up. And so I sort of cover it separately, but I'll go ahead and wade into it today. And in your homework tonight, there's an even better explanation of it, where you guys will get an even better chance to solve these with better notes. Homework number two on this is way better, more useful. So if we're solving for Vf, we're solving for the final velocity given A, B, and Vi. This gives us, this comes from the equation, Vf equals Vi plus A times B. In other words, the final velocity equals the starting velocity plus the acceleration times the time interval. And you'll notice that in my sentence here, I put this in parentheses because I just wanted to point out again that it goes first. Because remember, it's in parentheses. It's our order of operations. I try not to teach a bunch of algebra, but remember, if it's in parentheses, you need to knock that bad boy out first. Okay? And that's really the key to answering this type of question, is to use your order of operations properly. I think that's the key to answering any math problem. Use your order of operations properly. So, this problem says a car accelerates four meters per second squared for five seconds. Its starting speed was five. What was its final speed? This could probably say velocity. But you know, this equation works for speed, not just velocity. So that's why. What was its final speed? That tells me that we need to use the equation Vf. Plus sign ridiculously size. So I'm not going to do it. VF equals VI plus A times B. Step two, just like everything else, we're going to take the values and we're going to take them from the problem and we're going to plug them in here. It says that the starting speed was five, so that's going to go in here. Plus. A, so the car accelerates four meters per second squared, so that's going to go here. And five. <clears throat> Next step, just solve. Vf equals, well, to solve this, we need to do this problem first. Okay? That's 20. And then we put this part in 5 plus 20. We rewrite that again, Vf equals 25. 5 plus 20 is 25. Okay. So the trick to these is, is that you need to do this math first. This is the first thing you need to do. If you do enough of these, you'll start to be able to do them in your head. But it's always a good idea to write out your equation and then rewrite your equation and then solve it. Good idea until we got solid, solid footing on this stuff. Basically, through high school, you should be writing out your equations every time. We shouldn't skip that step where you're showing the work. Not until you're on the job using this for real work can you not write everything out the hard way. I agree 100%. I mean, it takes time, it takes effort, but it saves us from making those mistakes. So, again, we go back to step one. Back to step one. Truck's going 100 meters per second on the highway. The driver accelerates 10 to 3. How fast is he going now? How fast is he going at the end of the story? Now. Okay. How fast now? That tells us we're looking for VF. VF equals VI plus A, B, or A times B. 
feel like I'm writing that way too big though. So I'm gonna I need more space, so I gotta write it small. Step two, we're gonna rewrite the rewrite the equation again, Vf equals, except for now, we're gonna put values from the problem, from the word into the equation. So he starts out, he's going 100 meters per second on the highway. That's his VI, 100. He accelerates 10. We put that in here. Oh, I almost made a mistake there. This is plus A times B. He accelerates 10 for three seconds. That gives him where T is, the seconds of time. Step three, we're going to solve. Vf equals. Remember, we have to do this multiplication problem first. Plus 30. Now we know what his final speed is. If the guy's going 100 on the highway, he accelerates 10 meters per second squared for three seconds. That means that for second one number one, he adds 10 meters per second. For second number two, he adds 10 meters per second. For second number three, he adds 10 meters per second. He does that three times. He ends up at 130 because we add that to the starting speed that he had, the starting velocity that he had. That's all there is to this. We're going to move on. We're going to look at solving for VI. We have an equation for VI as well. This one has a subtraction sign in it, though. This subtraction symbol means that we got to get stuff in the proper order. When we're adding, we don't have to be careful which thing goes first, which thing we punch into um, our uh, calculator first, right? Because addition, it doesn't matter. The order is not important. But with subtraction, it is. So we have to be a little extra careful when we see a subtraction symbol or a division symbol. But we've still got it in parentheses here, so it's going to save us. We know that that goes first. Or we know that that's the thing that we do first. The problem says a biker pedals hard for three seconds. He accelerated by four meters per second. This should be square. Should be like a superscript screw. Sorry about that. Anything. He's now going 20 meters per second. What is his starting speed? Or what was his starting speed? Okay. If I say what was his speed, I'm probably talking about the initial velocity. That's VI equals. Bf minus a times b. Step two, we rewrite it. Bi equals. Well, what was the final speed? What was the final velocity? He said, well, he accelerated and now he's going this. 20 minus a times b. How much did he accelerate? Accelerated by four times. How long did he accelerate? Three seconds. There we go. Now we've got a math problem. Now it's just on to step three where we solve it. Vi equals uh, four times three is 12. Okay. And then 20 minus that. 20 minus 12 is eight. So his starting speed was eight. And we know that because we know how much speed he ended with, which was 20. We know how much he accelerated, and we know how much time he spent accelerating. And that would give us the speed he started with. I'm not going to clear that. Let me clear that. I will be erasing that VI next All right, and the final problem on this homework was the final problem on this homework was a runner accelerates two meters per second squared for 10 seconds. He finds that he's now going 20. How fast was he going before? Before. See this? How fast was he going? 
How fast was he before? That tells us that we're looking for bi. Bi equals bf minus a t. Step two, we rewrite that again. Bi equals, and then we take bf. Where was the bf? The final velocity was 20. At the end of the story, he was doing 20 minus a times t. Well, and he accelerates two. And he does that for 10 seconds. So there we go. Step two. Step three, we solve bi equals 20 minus, well, what's 2 times 10? That's 20. 20 minus 20, so bi, his initial velocity was 0. At the beginning of the story, this runner was not moving. He had 0 velocity. Sometimes that's true. A lot of times that's true. When we do these physics problems, we'll see that the initial velocity is zero. It makes everything else simpler. Okay, I, I think that's enough of an explanation that I can turn you guys loose on practice number two, homework number two over section two. Um, so this will be 4.2 practice number two. Um, that worksheet has a lot better explanations than these up here. It, it gives you a better um, look at this. I gave you an example of each kind of problem and how they're worked out. Um, but I think, I have confidence that you guys will be highly capable when it comes to uh, solving this type of problem um, on the upcoming quiz um, and on the upcoming test. Okay, we'll talk more about the quizzes and tests next week. It's no time real soon. It'll probably be next Tuesday for the quiz. So, so maybe Wednesday. So uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, if anyone has any questions, just hit me up in the chat. You guys have my phone number. You can get a hold of me, and I will be happy to help. Okay. In our 40 